When it comes to running clock code and these agentic tools on your computer, I do think that we need to be a little bit more cautious about what we allow to run. For example, if you run clogged code, a lot of the times when I'm running it, I actually run it with the dangerously skip permissions flag, which allows you to have a better developer experience. But if you think about it, you're just allowing these tools to have complete access to your machine. And all it takes is one bad prompt injection to have it delete your root directory, or even worse, maybe install a root kit that people can come in and actually start controlling your computer and key logging what you're doing. So when it comes to these tools, what Automaker, this, this whole talk's gonna be about Automaker, and by the way, I'm talking from my car when they change it up a little bit. But Automaker has these same issues as well because we basically wrap Claude code, we wrap cursor, we wrap codex, and hopefully open code soon. And those tools under the hood still have access to do things on your computer. And when it comes to having autonomous agents, which I do think is where this industry will slowly turn into, where you have all of this stuff basically being worked on when you're kind of stepping away from your computer, you don't sit there and watch every single command that's being run. And so the only way forward, I do believe, to keep this stuff secure is to start having sandboxes. And what do I mean by sandbox? Basically, in my opinion, I think Docker is probably the best way to sandbox these tools, which is why in Automaker, you can actually go and we have a Docker compose file. So let me show you, if you do an npm run start, it'll ask you, how do you want to run the app? We do have an electron mode, we have a web mode, but then we have a Docker mode. And the first two options are cool, they're very convenient, but if you want to actually have your computer be secure, you should probably be running this stuff in a Docker container. And I'll kind of talk about why just now. So why do I recommend Docker? And why am I running Automaker in Docker from this point on forward? Really, it's all about security. The first issue is we have pull requests that come in from the outside and they're like sometimes 50 file changes. Sometimes I've seen one with 180 file changes, which is absolutely crazy. And if you were to think that I'm gonna grab that and run that locally, you're out of your mind, right? So I would actually rather run that in a sandbox. I'd probably have my Docker container spun up and then I'd run the npm install inside of the container so that there's no like pre-install scripts I could run. And then I would go and verify all the code works inside that Docker container because it provides me isolation. So the first mode that we have in Automaker is the Electron mode. So basically you have Electron, it's just a, you know, a React app that's wrapped in Electron and it reads and writes from this API layer and the API layer can read and write from your computer, right? So it can read things from your disk, it can write files from your disk, it goes and it checks to see if you have the clog code CLI installed, the cursor CLI. It has to do a bunch of stuff on your file system. Now, for the most part, the code that we write in Automaker, we have some stuff set up. Like we have a secure FS adapter so that every file read and write, it has like a whitelist of things that we allow it to do. But for the stuff under the hood that we don't have control over, like the Anthropic Agent SDK, when you kick off a task in Automaker, like when I drag this card from the backlog to in progress, that actually kicks off the Anthropic Agent SDK and that just starts churning on your computer, right? And if there's one bad prompt injection, who knows what happens? And so I am very cautious about running Automaker now and all these, uh, you know, agentic tools on my computer because there's just no way to verify that they're not like messing stuff up or installing malicious software. So I think the most logical step that all of us developers need to do is we need to start running all this stuff inside of a Docker container. So Docker is a way to basically run an isolated service on your machine and it has its own special like base image and its own operating system. So anything that is outside of this Docker image, it doesn't really have access to. Now running in this mode, it's a little bit different. The only thing we really need to protect is the API because the API is what's running this Anthropic Agent SDK and it's also what's reading and writing from disk. So if you just actually run the API inside of Docker and the Electron app could be its own separate thing that you could potentially point to that locally running API or if you actually have a VM, you could host this VM somewhere else, right? And you could have your Electron app point to this when you spin it up. So I think this gives us a good developer experience and flexibility where the Electron app really doesn't do anything. It's just like a, a cool little wrapper around connecting to the actual API. And inside of the API, it's safe to run Anthropic Agent SDK because the only thing it has access to is what you allow it to have access to. So in Docker, there's actually something called a volume mount. And so if we go to our Docker compose file, you see down here, there's an automaker data mount. And when I spin this up locally, I have an overrides YAML file. And I basically say, hey, when I run Automaker, I want you to grant this locally running directory. So I have a users, web dev, Cody, workspace, Automaker workspace. I'm pointing to this projects directory. So the container itself, it has access to slash projects. Then outside of that, we have this working directory and I basically volume mount. So I say, hey, I need this container to basically point to projects. And then Automaker is actually gonna use the API to read and write from that project's directory. And that's the only thing it has access to. So that makes me feel a little bit more secure because the API can no longer just allow Anthropic to go off and like write to my computer. That's completely walled off now. It only has access to this directory. 
and it only has access to the tools that live inside of this. For example, I think you need the cloud code CLI installed for this Anthropic thing to work. We also have a cursor CLI installed. We are gonna end up adding like open code and codex. So all these tools, the API can now call into to achieve what it needs to achieve. And those are completely isolated from my computer. So I feel a lot more confident doing this. And I do think that this is kind of an approach that a lot of us need to start taking when dealing with agentic coding. We should be using sandboxes. We should be containerizing what we're running and allowing these tools to have access to just for that additional layer of security, right? And especially if you're working at a larger company at work or like sensitive stuff, like this is this is the de facto way you should be doing this. And there's tons of like third-party services that'll do this for you. Like they can spin up a whole VM for you and you can do your work remotely in there. Like, and the only thing you really have to worry about now is like if you wanted to, for example, have Anthropic automatically commit and push stuff to your repo, you probably just need to have like a fine-grained key with like fine-grained permissions so that when it tries to do GitHub commands, it can actually read and write from your repository, and that's it. Like you wanna isolate this container just to your projects that you're interested in. But I guess there's a lot of people who are using these tools now. A lot of them might be running Claude code with dangerous skip permissions. And I just want you guys to know that this is kind of a dangerous thing to do. That's why it's called dangerously skip permissions. You're allowing these tools to basically have access to your entire computer to install whatever, to delete whatever. And I think we need to start running stuff inside of sandboxes to keep them a little bit more secure. By the way, if you guys enjoy learning about agentic coding, go to agenticjumpstart.com. I totally forgot to turn on my Wi-Fi, so I can't even show you my, my website. It's not gonna load, but it's my course. I have a course that has, I think, over 80 videos now, 12 hours of content. I teach agentic coding, I teach cursor cloud code, and we also build out a full stack web application from scratch uh, using Tansac Start and Drizzle, and we get it all deployed out to Railway. So I do think it's a really, really great thing to start learning now, agentic coding. I do think it's the, uh, the future. So if you guys are interested, go check out agenticjumpstart.com. And then also, hopefully you guys enjoyed my talk. Let me know in the comments if you did or if you didn't. Have a good day and happy coding.